and it's nice soft sand so it won't hurt anything it's heavy oh. 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 and I'm getting blasted by the wind here's the good things the good things okay punch it Oh, the sand is really deep right now. Hello everyone, my name is Ian and you're watching Big Rock Moto. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And if you're new here and you like this kind of content, I hope you will consider subscribing. Now, if you're looking for a motorcycle that can do anything, ride on and off the road, but you don't like the styling of traditional modern adventure bikes, then a bike like this Triumph Scrambler 1200 could very well be for you. If you're in your 30s like I am and you didn't grow up in the On Any Sunday Steve McQueen era or times before that, you might be scratching your head and wondering what is a scrambler? To put it simply, long before the days of mass-produced dual sports and dedicated off-road bikes, people took regular street bikes, they put on knobby tires, they lifted the suspension, and they put on high exhaust and different seats, and they called them scramblers. Scramblers were the ADVs and dual sports before there were ADVs and dual sports. Triumph's 1200 Scrambler is truly unique, and this is a rare occurrence in today's copycat world. This bike takes all the styling cues, all the design elements of a traditional scrambler. The long flat seat, the high exhaust, the knobby tires, the long travel suspension, the small gauge cluster. It takes all of that and combines it with very modern and sophisticated brakes, suspension, chassis, and things like that. So the question is, with so many new adventure bikes coming out every single year, who is the scrambler intended for? Is this truly a practical alternative to a traditional mainstream adventure bike? And what are the pros and cons to this design? Today, we are doing a traditional in-depth Big Rock Moto review. I'm gonna start by showing you the riding position and the seat height. I'm gonna take you on a tour of the bike, show you all the specs and features. We're gonna take the bike out on the road. We're gonna take it off-road. We're gonna take it in the sand. I'm gonna do my traditional drop and lift test like I always do. We're gonna come back here, we're gonna discuss the pros and cons, the competition, and then we'll have some final thoughts. So with that, why don't we go for a ride? All right, so let's quickly cover the models and prices for the Scrambler 1200. Now, the Scrambler 1200 comes in two different flavors. You can get the XC or the XE. This bike is the XE. So the XC model is $14,745 for 2023 here in the USA. If you want to upgrade to the XE or the off-road oriented model, it's $1,500 more coming in at around $16,195. The differences with the XE, let me list them here now. So the XE going up from the XE model, you get longer travel suspension. It's 250 millimeters or 9.8 inches uh, versus 200 millimeters or about 8.2 inches. The seat height also increases because of that. So you go up from 33.1 inches or 840 millimeters on the XC to 34.2 inches or 870 millimeters on the XE. You get a front uh, adjustable ratio front brake lever. You get the off-road pro riding mode. You get the metal wraparound hand guards. You get wider and taller handlebars. Uh, it has more raked out, more more stable geometry and slower steering. You also get a six axis inertial measurement unit or IMU, which adds lean sensitive ABS and traction control. But put simply, the XE model is the upgraded, more off-road oriented, taller, more expensive version of the Scrambler 1200. If you're sticking more to the streets or not doing as hardcore of off-road riding, then the XC model is probably gonna suit you better and save you a little bit of money. Sound check. It helps if you have the key when you try to start the bike. All 
All right, so let's look at the seat height and riding position. You've got a 34.2 or 870 millimeter seat height on the Scrambler 1200. That's relatively tall. And when you combine it with the fact that the bike is heavy and carries its weight pretty high, it can be quite a bit of a handful and is not good for shorter riders or newer riders. Let me show you what I mean. So I am five foot 10 or 1.78 meters tall. I have a 32 inch NC, my weigh 200 pounds or about 90 kilograms. You can see that I am on my tiptoes with this bike at the seat height. Now, if I kind of slide my butt off the seat a little bit, I can flat foot on one side. Normally when I ride a motorcycle, I, when I come to a stop, I only put one foot down. It's very rare that I would put both feet down. It's a tall bike. Now the riding position you can see is extremely upright and very comfortable and the seat's also comfortable. However, cover this later in the video, but because you have so much wind blast without any wind protection, being in this kind of position, it feels like you're kind of being pulled off the bike when you're riding at higher speeds, as opposed to maybe a sportier bike with a lean forward position where you're able to brace yourself into the wind like this by leaning forward. This doesn't give you that advantage. All right, I've changed the camera because I want to show you the potential downside of a scrambler. With a high exhaust like this, it gets in the way. Let me show you what I mean. So when you're sitting on the motorcycle like this in a normal riding position with your feet on the pegs, hopefully you can see it in this camera shot, but my leg is resting against the exhaust. Now, yes, there are heat shields here on the exhaust, but it still gets hot and it still warms up your leg over time. It's gonna depend how hot the ambient conditions are, uh, what kind of riding apparel that you're wearing and things like that, but you are gonna get warm from that exhaust. But that's not the biggest problem that I've found. The biggest problem that I've found for me, because this is such an off-road capable machine uh, and I like to ride off-road, this is the problem. When I'm standing up, you see what's happening is that the exhaust is in my calf, in my boot. So I'm wearing adventure boot style boots here. These are Forma adventure boots. And if you can see, I'm having to be bow-legged and it's pushing my foot all the way out to the edge of the foot peg. If I try to put my foot on the foot peg properly, um, it's just very awkward and very painful because the exhaust is in my boot, in my calf. I really can't get positioned correctly because of the high exhaust. This is a downside that you're gonna have to keep in mind if you're thinking about getting a scrambler like this with the high exhaust. It's not gonna be a problem for a lot of people if you're not standing up a lot and riding aggressively off-road. But for me, it would be a pretty big factor if I was considering getting this bike. All right, so I've recruited my wife Maggie to come help and show the passenger accommodations or lack thereof on the <laughs> Scrambler 1200. So I'm gonna go ahead and get on and then I'll have you get on and you can tell us, you know, what you think. Okay. Okay. Okay, you can get on now. Okay. Tell us what uh, what you're experiencing back there. I mean, as someone who don't ride motorcycle very often, I think that there's not much for me to grab. So I do mean, you? Yeah, where would you where would you grab onto the bike? I mean, I would be holding on to you. But are there any places for you to put your hands? I mean, there's this handlebar here, but it's more like to the back, so I have to be like. Right. It's not like it's like yeah. It's not to the side. It's to the back. Right, and I believe this get hot, right? This part of the bike? Yeah, that's the exhaust. Okay, so that's a problem because if I am someone who's riding with you, if I don't have gloves on, or even if I have gloves on, then if I accidentally try to grab it and my hands here, that would not be good. Yeah, so her leg is resting on, her leg is protected by this heat shield here. Right. But you have this exposed part back right. here. Um, how's the seat feel? Does it feel just okay, like? I mean, I wish that it's a little bit bigger. I'm a pretty small person already, and I just feel that there's not enough. Like, I feel that I have to be like sitting so close to you. Okay. Yeah. But I, I have enough room. I don't feel crammed, so it feels like it'd be okay for shorter trips, but not, not really touring well, and, for two people. And I'm know? sitting back here. I feel that there's not much room behind me. I feel that I'm yeah. sitting on the edge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. Okay, you can go ahead and get off. Okay. Thanks, Maggie, for helping out. Oh, anytime. I hit the microphone a couple of times. I hope that the audio is still okay. All right, let's cover the specs and then take you on a tour of the Scrambler 1200 XE. 
So the weight, the weight is 505 pounds or 229 kilograms wet. That makes this bike heavier than a Tiger 900 Rally Pro, an Africa Twin 1100, or even a Ducati Desert X. The bike has a 26.9 degree suspension rake angle, uh, making it pretty stable and also contributing to a fairly long wheelbase at 61.8 inches or 1,570 millimeters. It's interesting to note that a Tiger 900 from Triumph has a 24.6 degree rake, contributing to some instability on the Tiger 900, especially in the sand. This bike doesn't suffer from that with a more relaxed geometry. However, the steering is quite a bit slower, which we're gonna get to in the riding segment. Let's talk about the engine. It's a liquid-cooled eight valve, single overhead cam, 270 degree crank, parallel twin. It's 1200 cc. It has an 11 to one compression ratio, meaning that you really don't have to use premium fuel. For power, it's not a powerhouse, honestly. Uh, it's only 89 horsepower, uh, 66 kilowatts at 7,400 RPM. Now I say only 89 horsepower, that is still a lot of horsepower, but for a 1200 cc engine, you might have been expecting more, but that's just not how these engines are tuned. They're tuned for torque. Speaking of torque, 81.1 foot-pounds or 110 newton meters at 3,950 RPM. Final drive, as you can see here, is going to be an X-ring chain. It's a wet uh, clutch multi-plate with a slip assist feature, and it's hooked up through a six-speed gearbox. Notably, the Scrambler 900 or the Street Scrambler that I reviewed a few weeks ago only had that five-speed gearbox. Looking at the chassis and all the other things like that, we have a tubular steel frame. I think that's kind of contributing to some of the weight of this bike. It has an aluminum cradle. Uh, swing arm is twin-sided aluminum. You can see that here. It's kind of this nice brushed aluminum finish which kind of matches some of the other parts of the bike. Front wheel is tubeless spoked wheels, 21-inch wheel. It's a 2.15-inch rim. Rear is a 17-inch as opposed to a more off-road oriented 18-inch setup, and that's a 4.25-inch uh, rim there. Rear tire is a 150-70-17, and the front tire, of course, is a 90-90-21. Moving on to the suspension, which is pretty special on this bike. So you have 47 millimeter Showa forks up front and this pretty gold finish. They're fully adjustable. Uh, they have 9.8 inches or 250 millimeters of travel, which is a lot. Rear suspension, coming around back here, you can see that we are using twin shocks, which is a rare thing these days and is really um, you know, part of that scrambler or old school style. They're fully adjustable Olin's units with the Triumph branding on them. 250 millimeters or 9.8 inches of travel just like the front forks. This motorcycle has really phenomenal brakes. You can see here we have Brembo M50 calipers, four piston on each side, and they're squeezing 320 millimeter discs. And of course you have ABS. In addition to ABS, you have cornering ABS because the XE model has that six axis inertial measurement unit or IMU giving you cornering ABS and cornering traction control which is a more advanced system. Rear brakes you've got a single 255 millimeter disc and a Brembo uh, two piston floating caliper. Looking at the fuel tank it's 16 liters or 4.2 gallons. Now your fuel economy is going to vary dramatically depending on how you ride this bike. I've seen anywhere from the high 30s in my testing all the way up to 50 miles a gallon. So about um, at the high of about 5.8 and a low of about 4.6 liters for, uh, per 100 kilometer if you're using that system of measurement. So it can vary a lot. So you're going to have a range of, I would say, around 150 or 240 kilometers. But again, depends a lot on how you ride and how willing you are to get that tank down towards the empty level. All right, let's take our tour around the bike. I'm gonna start with the lighting and then I'll go ahead and turn off the light so we don't kill our battery. LED front headlight, high and low beam with kind of this ring around it. You can see LED front turn signals with clear lenses. And then on the back, you've got an LED rear brake tail light and LED rear turn signals as well. We'll cover the TFT and the dash towards the end of the segment. Starting at the front, this bike is equipped with Michelin Anarchy Wild tires, which are incredible tires. Uh, they don't come factory on this bike. This was an optional thing that Triumph put on uh, for this bike being a demo bike for off-road. 
talked about suspension, brakes, wheels, all that kind of stuff already. We talked about the lights working our way around. We'll do the controls at the very end. You can see up here, you've got the radiator, which has on this bike has this nice metal cover here. You can see with the Triumph logo down here, you've got a skid plate as well. Of course, the signature Scrambler exhaust, which comes around and wraps around the bike here to the back. This, we're gonna talk about this a lot throughout the video, so I'm not gonna harp on it now, but there is engine, there is heat from this exhaust and it is in the way when you're standing up because as you can see, your foot wants to go here or your leg wants to go here, but the peg is out here. So when you're standing, it's a real problem. Okay, I love how they detailed the exhaust and all these little cooling fins. Of course, the cooling fins on the engine are mostly cosmetic. I just love the styling of these Triumphs. The brake lever, you can flip it over. Uh, it's two position, uh, higher or lower. So if you're standing up more, you can have it in a high position. Pretty decent size uh, metal foot pegs here. Some guards here on the engine. Passenger pegs, which are, yeah, they do bolt on to the subframe. So that's kind of nice to see that. Uh, talked about the swing arm already. Chain, rear shocks, you have a rebound adjustment down here. Compression adjustment is at the top. We've talked about the rear rim, rear tire, rear brakes, all that stuff already. Working our way around the back, license plate, all that's fine. Metal, uh, yeah, metal rear fender, metal kind of grab bar here. For the back, not really a good place for your passenger to hold on that I see anywhere here. Uh, one piece seat, definitely looks like a scrambler. Really cool Triumph logo here at the back. The other rear shock, of course, twin shocks, as we've already talked about. Under here is gonna be the air filter uh, cover under a couple covers here, so that's pretty nice, you can get to that. You have, sometimes I forget that Triumphs have the switch here um, because they've got a key fob and you turn the ignition on up there. You can also disable it by, by here, just as a sort of an additional safety feature or anti-theft feature. Um, side of the engine, engine here, spark plug, which you can see is pretty accessible. Talked about the fuel tank, all right. Let's cover the controls, the TFT. So the mirrors, hand guards are pretty strong metal hand guards. It's nice to see that from the factory. That's very, very rare that a manufacturer will give you metal hand guards. Although I don't know, you know, ultimately how strong they are. Something has to fail in a crash or has to be a weakest point somewhere. You can see the suspension adjustments up here for the forks. Uh, let's talk about the key really quick. So I've got the key fob in my pocket here. This is how the key fob looks. It's got a switch blade that comes out. It's kind of hard to do this with one hand here. Switch blade was a little bit sticky on this key. Now, you don't put the key in to get the ignition on the bike, but you do have this here. This is actually a steering lock, so you can turn the bars and you use this to lock your steering. But otherwise, this key fob is gonna stay in your pocket. Now, to get gas, uh, you can lock the gas cap here. So that's unlocked, then the gas cap will spin off. Lock like, like this pull the key, pull the key out. Sorry, it's hard to do this with one hand. And then the gas cap just spins so it's locked in place. We'll go ahead and put the key away now. All right, talking about our controls. So starting here, we've got horn. This is the menu switch, which I'll show you here in a minute to navigate the bike. Turn signals, riding mode button. Up here, kind of hard to see, you've got a cruise control switch. There's no up and down uh, speed control for the cruise control, which is very odd, which I'll show you in the riding segment. Um, Switch for extra lights, which this bike doesn't have. Passing switch. Clutch, which has a very stiff pull. Stiff clutch springs on a big engine like this, and it's a cable clutch. I would have liked to have seen a hydraulic clutch, if I'm being honest. Handlebar here. The XE model has taller bar risers on it than the XC model. That's something you should know. I actually find these bars to be a little bit too high. Working our way around here, you have four-way flashers. The ignition switch, which Rocks, uh, off, run, start, all that kind of stuff. All the Triumphs these days are coming with this. Home button for your menu screen. Adjustable levers, I should have mentioned, the clutch lever does have an adjustment there for reach. The brake lever has a reach adjustment, but what it also has is a ratio adjustment. Now, a lot of people miss this, but here it's kind of hard to see. You can adjust the ratio of the pull. This is a very high-end braking system. It allows you to fine tune the progressiveness of the brake feel, which is really nice. This bike does not have heated grips uh, from the factory. All right, now let's turn on our TFT. 
get this booted up. So when you boot it up, you hear things happening. You see Scrambler 1200 come up. It says, good afternoon, rider. You can change that name there if you want. Oh, I got something on my fingers. Uh, so the screen, for being a small TFT, it actually has quite a bit of useful information. Now, there are two layouts that you have. Uh, let me show you the difference here. So if I go in here, I can go display setup. So I'm navigating everything with this toggle switch here, this four-way joystick. Display setup, theme, theme two. Now, if I go back to home, you'll see that we've changed. So in this theme, which I think they call quartz, you've got a tachometer over here, big speedometer here that goes up to 130, riding mode indication, fuel gauge, uh, gear position, an indication here for what, and then this is fuel because over here I've got the fuel screen pulled up. So when I have the fuel screen pulled up, this right pod gives me a little tiny clock and then it gives me my MPG for this tank, my instant miles per gallon, and then the range left on this tank. Now to scroll through different features here in this right hand pod, this is your trip computer, uh, this is the style, so actually you can, okay, you can customize it more there. Uh, oh yeah, so there I can easily quickly switch. Now you can see this other mode. But anyway, going back here, a contrast, coolant temperature, and then back to fuel. Now, this is the other style of gauge that you have, which is a large kind of, semi, it's not analog tack, but it looks like an analog tack. Speedometer reads out here, digital speedometer, and then you have a fuel gauge over here and the same pod here on your right. On these sides here, you have indicator lights for things like ABS and different things like that. Well, actually the ABS is up here, but there's other lights that can come up here on the side. To switch riding modes, you've got the mode button here, and when you press it, you will see up here in this left cluster, you've got road, sport, off-road, off-road pro, rider, and rain. So you get the off-road pro mode uh, only on the XE model. Now one frustrating thing, which I will point out later, is that when you're in off-road or off-road pro and you have traction control turned down or turned off and you have ABS turned off to the rear wheel, when you restart the bike, let's say I put the mode here now, all right, I'm doing fine, I'm in off-road pro mode. I stop the bike to do something on the side of the trail. I get back on the bike, start it, I'm gonna take off, go on my merry way, but unfortunately, what's gonna happen is the bike is now gone back into the road mode. It does not hold your ride mode, which I find very, very frustrating, and I don't understand why they set it up that way. Now, I probably don't wanna go through all this, but if I go in here, you can go into the riding modes and uh, you can actually customize uh, the riding modes a little bit. We're not gonna do that right now. Uh, bike setup, if you go into there, you can set up traction control, how your turn signals work, trip setup, display setup. So we've already talked about the theme. You can change the contrast. Visible trays, you can have different information uh, if you want, rider name, we should program that to, well, anyway, I wanna be funny and do something bad, but we shouldn't do that. Um, and then reset the defaults. When they get back to home, you just press the home button and you're back here. I like this gauge pod. I think they did a pretty good job with it. Let's quickly cover the maintenance requirements on the Scrambler 1200. So excuse me for referring to my notes here, but I wanna get this right. So Triumph wants you to do an oil change every one year, 12 months, or 10,000 miles or 16,000 kilometers. They want you to do a valve adjustment every 20,000 miles or 32,000 kilometers. The air filter, you're gonna to need to do that when the air filter gets dirty, but it is under a side panel cover here, which I'll put a little video of here, which is pretty easy to get to, so I appreciate that. And then of course you have the normal things, tires, brakes, and you do have a drive chain that you're going to have to clean, adjust, and lubricate. All right, let's do our zero to 80 to zero test. That's 80 miles per hour, not kilometers per hour close course of course using abundance of caution okay punch it oh boy let me tell you she's got good acceleration good torque it's not gonna you know beat up on a sport bike and then the brakes are very strong it's just you have a tremendous amount of chassis dive forward just because of all the suspension travel which of course you expect but i mean if you want to i mean that was a full brake abs engaged and it stopped from 80 very quickly
right, it's another very windy day in the Banning Pass. We have winds of about 25 to 30 miles an hour coming out of the west. We're going to be riding towards the west on the freeway, so we're going to have a lot of wind hitting us, which is a good test of this bike on the freeway. Pretty much one of the worst case scenarios that you could have on a bike with no wind protection. So let's go ahead and give you the freeway The freeway riding experience on the Scrambler 1200. So, let me get over into the fast lane here and start to tell you kind of what we have going on. So it's 75 miles an hour and a wind of about 25 miles an hour. My airspeed is around 100 miles an hour maybe. And I hope you can hear this because it's very, very, very windy and I'm getting blasted by the wind. Here's the good things. The good things are the bike has plenty of power to do this. The engine, even though it's spinning at 4,000 RPM, has plenty, uh, it doesn't feel buzzy or, or like it's working very hard at all. So that's good. The bike's very stable, very composed. Now the downsides. What are the downsides? Well, let me pull in behind this car here. 85 miles an hour now. The downside, if you can still hear me, I gotta slow down. The downside is that I feel like I'm being torn off the back of the motorcycle. I'm having to physically pull with my arm muscles forward into the bike so I'm not ripped off the handlebars backwards like that. The wind blast is really, really bad. It's just the way it is on a bike with no wind protection to speak of. So if you're planning to do a lot of miles at high speed on the highway, uh, touring kind of stuff at higher speeds, uh, I'm not sure this kind of bike is really what you want to be looking at. If you're just around town, slower speeds, maybe short rides on the highway, sure, of course, it's fine. But the lack of wind protection, I've found, especially when you're riding all day or even just half a day, the total lack of wind protection really is very tiring because, you know, you're having to pull yourself forward. And unlike a lot of bikes that have, uh, that are naked bikes out there, uh, that have a, a, a more forward-leaning riding position, those bikes you can brace against the wind because the riding position puts you into a braced position leaning forward. However, on this bike, because it's totally straight up right, you have no way to really brace into the wind, so you feel like the wind's hitting your torso and just gripping you backwards. All right, let's ride the Scrambler around town to see how she is as a little urban commuter. So what do you notice? Well, like we've talked about, the bike is, is tall and heavy, so it's not really a very good beginner option. Um, but it's pretty narrow, pretty maneuverable, and it has all the torque from the engine, so really nice and easy to zip around town like that. I mean, you can get up to traffic speed really quick. And then in terms, well, I'll try to show you lane sh filtering in a minute, but it's fine for that too. You do have pretty wide handlebars, but overall the bike is pretty narrow. Um, so today it's relatively cool. It's around maybe 75 degrees down here Fahrenheit. And I already do, I definitely already feel the heat from the exhaust on my leg. I'm wearing um, uh, laminated, you know, waterproof uh, clothing today. Actually, I'm wearing the MSR Voyager gear. And I still feel the heat on my leg. I'm not like roasting to death, but I have ridden this bike on in hotter weather and, and the heat does, is something you notice quite a bit from that exhaust. So in addition to some of the issues we're gonna talk about, like when you're trying to stand up and that exhaust being in the way of your leg, uh, around town at lower speed, especially if you live in a hot climate, yeah, the exhaust heat is, is a, a definite downside of having the scrambler style exhaust and add that to the fact that all modern motorcycles, in my opinion, are just running hotter, putting more engine heat on the rider. I think something to do with Euro 5 emissions, but, and the catalytic converters that all the bikes have now. Um, 
but really as an around town bike i don't see i don't see many problems here as long as you're tall enough because every time you come to a stop to get your feet down i mean uh unless you're a tall person i wouldn't recommend getting the xe model that's for sure get in here yeah so it's perfectly fine just watch your handlebar width but one of the nice things about california is this is perfectly legal acceptable and uh you know nobody gets mad about it because ever all the bikers do it i don't know why this lane sharing isn't legal in every location in the entire world it just makes total sense in every single way but anyway that's a soapbox for another day i mean getting up to 45 miles an hour speed limit gosh it's so quick on this because you have so much torque off the bottom all right up there is highway 243 one of my favorite mountain roads from this side for sure here is the scrambler 1200 xe so what are the pluses and minuses for sport riding on this bike well we have knobby tires so we're not going to be able to reach its full potential the bike is a little bit heavy a little bit tall has way too much suspension travel for you know aggressive sport riding so the chassis has a lot of movement but what you have going for you is you have a lot of torque you have wide handlebars and you have the benefits of modern suspension electronics traction control quartering abs inertial measurement unit and all those sorts of things so we're going to leave the bike in a normal road mode because the only thing sport mode does is make the throttle response more aggressive which i don't care about i can still reach full power uh, and the same acceleration in the road mode so i don't really use sport mode on the bikes that i test i never get tired of hearing this bike sound it just sounds so nice all right let's lock and load so i'm trying this uh, schubert c3 pro helmet it's supposed to be one of the quietest motorcycle helmets in the world i am finding it to be very quiet still has the typical wind whistling that you get with all helmets close the vents up here but let me know how you think of the audio in today's video if it's better than normal then i'll keep using the c3 pro all right <laughs> you know you can have fun on any motorcycle right i mean Oh, there's a tra <laughs> traction control is doing a lot of work here to keep us from having an accident i'm surprised how little vibration there is in this engine i mean you can take it all the way to red line you don't feel any vibration but it's really more of an engine that you're going to use in that mid-range i'm in third gear attacking this road you have a lot of leverage with these wide handlebars okay so let me break this down i mean knobby tires long suspension travel you have a lot of pitching of the chassis back and forth the steering is also kind of slow uh, because you have that raked out suspension rake, uh, rake angle and a long wheelbase a longer swing arm so it's you know it's not a canyon carver type of bike you're not going to keep up with a well-ridden naked bike or sport bike or even some other of the sportier adventure bikes but it does great for what it is and the average rider is still going to have a ton of fun even actually even more experienced riders are going to still have a ton of fun riding this on a canyon road uh it's really good for that i will mention one thing the the on off throttle is it, there's a tiny bit of a of a lurch in the on off throttle it's very common with motorcycles that i've been testing the past couple years so it's not just with this bike but i do notice that just a little bit you know brakes are really strong but the thing with the the thing with the brakes is that you have so much fork dive i mean almost 10 inches 250 millimeters of travel with this suspension yeah i mean of course you're going to have fork dive you know there's no way around that and i do have to put in a plug for these mitchell and tires these anarchy wilds for a knobby tire that work so well off-road they do pretty darn good job in the corners on the street i would just say for a twisty road riding sporty type riding if that's something you do often this bike will do the job you can still have fun with it it's just not purpose built for that you know these dual these uh, dual sports or adventure bikes scramblers whatever they're all a compromised type of bike right so 
you know you're trying to have the off-road ability but that conflicts with the sporting ability on the road but overall i think they do a pretty good job trying to make it work pretty well at everything all right well you can probably hear the wind we got a storm coming in it's pretty dramatic it's actually a chance of snow tonight it's about six o'clock in the evening i should be home eating dinner with my family but i'm out here filming the scrambler because that's how dedicated i am uh, to filming this bike so here's the off-road uh, rundown with the scrambler you have a lot of ground clearance you have a lot of suspension travel I've got the Anarchy Wild tires. Thank you, Triumph, for supplying a test bike with proper off-road tires. They're actually one of my favorite adventure tires. I've got Olin suspension fully adjustable. I've got off-road uh, ride modes and electronics. We can turn off the rear ABS. We've got off-road traction control, and, or we can do off-road uh, pro mode with no traction control. Pretty decent foot pegs. We've got actual hand guards here. And so, pretty good. Working against us, though, what we have is 505 pounds of weight, which is quite heavy. All the weight is carried high, so the bike is really top heavy. Um, and so really you have the size and weight of a full-size adventure bike, to be honest. So let's ride this and see how this see how this goes. So uh, what we what I like to do off-road on the scrambler. All right, we get it booted up. We can see boot up here. Now one huge annoyance that I have with this bike I don't think I mentioned it yet or maybe I did in the other segment but it resets to road mode every single time you restart the ignition so that's really a problem because you have it in off-road or off-road pro mode you've got your ABS turned off you've got your traction control turned off you shut off the bike for some reason start it, it goes back to road mode well the problem with road mode is well let me just show you what the problem is the problem with road mode is you have like look I'm putting the throttle all the way and I'm barely moving forward in ride mode what I have to do is I have to stop the bike go in here and the ride modes come up here in the left which I like the I like how they show this here on this little pod I think that works well um, oops off-road off-road pro then I have to hit this top this check mark button to select it it says OTCS oh, uh, or traction control off, ABS off. Okay, pro ride mode now. See, now I have no traction control and I can give it the beans and I can actually ride the bike in the dirt. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, man. Oh. Ah, okay. Woo! <laughs> Big slide. Oh, moly. So this is the typical route that I take all the adventure bike tests on these days. It's very bumpy, very rutted out. It's got a lot of embedded rocks, big dips to test the suspension. So let me try to describe how it is to ride the Scrambler 1200 XE off-road. It plays a psychological trick on your mind because you look down at the bike and you see the small gas tank and the small gauges. You don't see a windshield and all the stuff. And you think, oh, this is kind of like a big dirt bike or a dirt bike, but it doesn't ride like a dirt bike at all. It's still very heavy and quite unwieldy off-road. It's very capable, but the weight catches up to you really fast when you try to ride more aggressively. The suspension runs through the stroke very easily. Even at moderate speeds, I can bottom out the rear very very easily like on something like this uh, I didn't quite bottom it there I bet you I can bottom it here though ah yeah that was a bottom out on the back not too hard but it did so the bike is sprung pretty soft um, which means that you're definitely going to use up all the suspension travel off-road but it gives a fairly 
a fairly plush ride so you can hit stuff pretty good and it takes the impact pretty well in terms of giving you a relatively smooth ride this is a very rough road um, but it gives you a pretty smooth ride now in terms of how the engine behaves <laughs> I mean you have a lot of power and a lot of torque so it's actually a pretty good engine for off-road riding Now, this brings me to one of my biggest problems with the Scrambler for off-roading, and I also noticed this when I did the review of the, of the 900 Scrambler. So the exhaust, you probably can't really see in this film here, but the exhaust pushes my, it's in my calf when I'm standing up, and it pushes my boot and my leg way out off the foot peg on the edge of the foot peg. So it's very, very awkward to stand up and ride this motorcycle which is kind of a problem for off-roading do you kind of get used to it uh, just a little bit but it's it's super annoying because i can't really keep my foot in the right place because the exhaust is pushing my whole leg out to the right so it's a huge downside of having this high exhaust and even on the left side of the bike they have this this like uh, the air cover thing on the side with the Scrambler logo and it pushes my left leg out too so I'm, I'm like bow-legged so it feels very awkward and uncomfortable and then what I end up doing is sitting down and riding because <sighs> because I get so sick of feeling like I'm a crazy bow-legged person or something so that's a very frustrating thing now in terms of off-road braking so it seems like off-road pro mode turns off the ABS to the front and the back which I don't like I would prefer the ABS to be on the front I think in off-road mode it leaves it on the front but turns off the back um, that the brakes are good for off-road you have the suspension is just very active there's a lot of movement in the suspension the bike is actually very very capable of off-road terrain but you have to give it a lot of respect because it gets on a line very easily. It has a lot of power. It'll start sliding on you and you'll tend to overcook corners going way too fast because you feel like you're on a dirt bike and then all of a sudden you have to go around a corner and it doesn't want a corner or a break in time because you've got all that inertia, all that mass of this thing bearing down on you. So there's good and bad to it, but is it really capable? Absolutely. Is it good for beginners? No. And is it really better than an adventure bike, a traditional adventure bike off-road? No, it really isn't. In fact, there's quite a few adventure bikes that I'd prefer to ride off-road compared to this. So slow speed, one of the things I wanted to talk about is the top heaviness. So because, you see what just happened there, because the bike is really top heavy, like if it starts to get off center a little bit or to the side, it feels like it's going to slam to the ground. It's just very top heavy. So slow speed maneuvers are, are a bit harder on this bike and a bit more nerve wracking because it feels like the bike wants to tip over pretty easily. Another thing for slow speed riding is the clutch is very, very heavy. 1200 cc engine they probably have really strong clutch springs they gave us a cable clutch which i don't agree with should have been hydraulic and so just like right now holding this clutch in my hand is getting cramped and kind of it hurts because it's just a very heavy pull and that's something that i noticed when testing this bike uh and something i really don't like very much about it the bike has a pretty long wheelbase and with the kind of the very relaxed geometry it's very stable it doesn't do anything really unpredictable so on faster dirt roads or where you have some sand and things like that the bike is pretty stable it doesn't feel twitchy like the tiger 900s often do so that's kind of a good aspect the downside of that is that getting it to turn into corners it turns kind of slow i mentioned that on the highway but off-road it's also kind of true it kind of steers a little bit slow and in tighter corners i did a big ride out in the desert there's a lot of like sand washes and stuff in tighter corners it's, uh, it just kind of feels kind of the steering feels a bit lazy you know but like hitting the sand right here like it's very it's very predictable it just wants to go in a straight line it has so much torque it just always wants to light up the rear tire <laughs> 
it's just a handful to get this thing to turn and to stop. Uh, drop and lift test and a sand wash. We're gonna be very gentle on the drop and lift test because this is a very pretty bike and you don't have crash bars and things like that. So let's bring it down into the sand wash here and then dro uh, drop it real carefully and lift it up. Now you notice I didn't turn, I leave the ignition on a lot of the times when I'm just doing like a stop for a minute or two just because I don't want to have to go and reset the ride mode again. All right, let's very gently lay the bike down. Very, very gently. And it's nice soft sand, so it won't hurt anything. Okay, let's see where we're impacting here. So it looks like it's kind of impacting the engine case. Gas tank is really pretty far off the ground. Uh, hand guards, these metal hand guards are doing their job. They come stock on the XE model. The back of the bike, you can kind of see here, it does fall fairly flat, just to give you a look at it. From here, you can get a view of the skid plate. There's your oil filter there. You want to do an oil change. Uh, all right. Now I know this isn't a real like crash or anything, but I don't want to crash the bike, okay? This is not my motorcycle. Now, lifting it up, looks like we're gonna grab this handle here and the handlebar here. Oh, heavy. Oh. Uh. Uh. Okay. It's really heavy have to bleep out those cuss words there try to keep it family friendly it's really heavy to lift um, it looks like it was impacting here so you'd have to be real careful for that um, hand guard maybe the shock foot peg stuff like that but that's why we do it in sand so we don't do any damage now all right so riding in the sand first of all don't try this if you have street tires anarchy wilds very good sand tire the bike it's pretty stable and stuff like this, but it's a handful. You really got to watch it. It's sand. My whole thing with riding sand is I tell people you got to be more aggressive than you'd like. You got to be way more aggressive than you would think because aggressive throttle, launch the bike, keep keep up the speed to keep the bike planing up on top of the sand. If you try to go slow, the front end is going to just going to sledge all around. So Okay, aggressive starts. Oh, the sand is really deep right now. All right, so the bike doesn't like, the bike is really quite stable. I've taken a lot of bikes in here. Let's go through another run. Oh, that sand is deep, man. Holy moly. I mean, the bike is, <sighs> the bike is a handful, but it's manageable. It's better than a lot of adventure bikes. I'd rather take this in a sand wash than a BMW GS, that's for sure. It's totally survivable. It's just not the most ideal thing. You'd rather have a dirt bike, for no, but for an, something, the weight of an adventure bike, it's really, really not bad. So that about wraps up the off-road portion of the Scrambler 1200, I think. I do enjoy riding it off-road. It has a different and unique feel than anything else because it doesn't feel like a dirt bike, but it also doesn't quite feel like an adventure bike. So it's, it's kind of just its own thing. It's very capable, but it's also heavy, tall, top heavy, demands a lot of respect and is not for beginner riders or for somebody learning off-road for sure. All right, pros and cons for the Scrambler 1200 XE. Now I've kind of covered all these throughout the length of this video, but let me just offer them here as a summary for you. So here's the pros for me in a nutshell. The styling, I think it looks beautiful, it looks unique. It stands out from the crowd. You've got high quality construction and components. The motorcycle sounds great whether you're sitting on it, whether you're riding it at speed, it just has a great exhaust sound to it. The suspension is very plush and very soft, giving you a very smooth ride, even in rough off-road terrain. And you have really genuine off-road capability here in this platform. 
What are the downsides or the cons to the Scrambler 1200? Again, we've covered these throughout the review and you do need to pay attention to these if you're thinking about investing in this motorcycle. So for me, it's tall and it's relatively top heavy. The ride mode resets, which I've covered, I don't wanna rehash that. The exhaust placement is very challenging for standing up. It pushes your leg and bows your leg out and that is a real frustration that I've found. Also, the exhaust is very hot on your legs, especially in hotter weather. You have no wind protection, although of course you could add a fly screen or a windshield if you wanted to. You have a somewhat limited fuel range uh, out of the smaller gas tank, and it has a very heavy clutch pull, so your hand gets tired if you're doing a lot of uh, clutching and off-road conditions or maybe a lot of stop and go urban riding. All right, so what are the competitors to the Triumph Scrambler 1200? Now, in all honesty, there really is no exact direct competitor. If you look at the package that you get with this, the suspension, the engine, the higher end features, the fit and finish, there's really nothing quite like it. And if you fall in love with this, if this is what you want, then there really is no direct substitute. But if you are doing some cross shopping, there are some other models and categories you should look at. Ducati makes a bike called the Scrambler Desert Sled. The Desert Sled is quite a bit lighter. It's about 50 pounds lighter than this. It uses a smaller engine, so it doesn't have the power and torque. The Ducati, of course, has very different kind of styling. It's not quite as traditional in terms of scrambler styling as this, but you do get that genuine off-road ability. Uh, and it's something that you should definitely be considering if you're looking at this. But for me, I have to be honest, if I want a scrambler, this gives me the scrambler look and feel more so than the Desert Sled does. Triumph has their Street Scrambler or Scrambler 900. I reviewed that bike just a few weeks ago and found it to be a very competent overall motorcycle. The differences are quite substantial. They're built on different engine platforms. So the Scrambler 900 or Street Scrambler has a much smaller engine with a lot less power and torque. The motorcycle is lighter. It's much lower to the ground. It has much shorter suspension travel. It's really not well suited to any sort of extensive off-road rough terrain riding because of that shorter suspension and the lack of ground clearance. It's really more of that urban or street scrambler. The Scrambler 900 is going to be better probably for most people, honestly, unless you're doing hardcore off-road riding because it's so much lower to the ground. You've got the lower seat height, you've got the lower weight, and of course it costs much less money. Now, what if you were to compare a Scrambler like this to a traditional adventure bike? You could look at Triumph's own Tiger 900 Rally Pro. You could look at anything else out there in the mid-size category. It could Ducati Desert X, a KTM 890, uh, whatever you want to look at. So that becomes a really, really difficult conversation, and we can't go all the way into that. But I think what it comes down to at the end of the day is, do you want a bike that looks and sounds like this. If you want the scrambler style, then this is what you're going to get. However, I do have to be honest and tell you that if you're looking at those traditional adventure bikes for the same price, you're getting great wind protection, you're getting more features, more comfort, you're getting more performance envelope. If you look at the spectrum from street and touring riding to sport riding to off-road riding, you're getting more performance, more capability for your dollar than you do on this bike. We've talked about the limitations of a scrambler like this, and there's legitimate reasons why, you know, the world has moved away from this kind of a style to actual adventure and dual sport bikes. But if this is something you like, then this is what you're gonna get and enjoy it, it's amazing. Final thoughts on Triumph's Scrambler 1200 XE. It really is truly rare that I come across and I'm able to test a motorcycle that really is quite unique. There's so many copycat products these days and honestly, the way I feel is that a lot of adventure bikes and dual sports and any category you look at, the bikes are actually really very similar to each other. However, with the Scrambler 1200, you are getting an experience, a look, uh, a set of performance and capability that really is very, very different than just about anything else out there. Now, there are practical limitations and there are downsides to this bike, and we've covered those in depth here in this review. So if you're thinking about picking one of these up, you're not gonna regret it. I think you're gonna get something very special, something valuable that will stand the test of time, that's made well, is enjoyable to ride, and I think you really will enjoy it. But you absolutely need to keep in mind the downsides and the compromises that I've covered in this review.
I've really, really enjoyed my time with this Scrambler and I really don't want to give it back to Triumph. I enjoy riding this bike so much despite some of the compromises that we've talked about. So I really, really hope this review was genuinely informative and useful and all those things. If it was, please consider supporting Big Rock Moto and there's ways to do that in the video description and the pinned comment below. That's about it. So other than that, please ride safe and I'll see you out there.